Recently, I did a video about GNOME potentially dropping its X11 session, and as to be expected, that video had quite a bit of negative discourse, but even amongst people involved in GNOME, people involved directly in that merger quest, it wasn't fully being supported. There were a lot of people who were very wary about doing this now, and maybe this is just a little bit too quick. Fully aware that GNOME has some serious problems that need to be dealt with on Wayland, many of those problems that have already been dealt with on Plasma, that really need to be solved before you can actually fully drop X11, let alone things outside of GNOME's control, like NVIDIA. For today, let's ignore whether doing this is a good or a bad idea. Let's just acknowledge the fact that at some point in the future, GNOME is going to drop their X11 session. It might be next year, it might be in 10 years, but at some point, it is going to happen. And no matter when it happens, there is going to be a lot of struggles and a lot of pain in the short term. But in the long term, it's probably going to be better for the Linux desktop as a whole. Now, what I want to talk about is why it might be a good idea to do so early, even though things like NVIDIA have not been dealt with yet. NVIDIA is a constant thorn in both the side of Linux and also Wayland. Whether it's the old lack of GPU acceleration in X Wayland apps that has been dealt with, so please don't mention that as an actual real problem. Whether it's things like the continued issues with hybrid graphics on laptops. Whether it's the fact that eGPUs are a fairly rare use case, so they just don't see that much testing. Or just general driver instability issues causing black screens, crashes, and various other things that the user just doesn't want to deal with. Now credit where credit is due. NVIDIA is making progress towards better Wayland support, and pretty much every driver version that comes out has at least a couple of fixes here and there dealing with various Wayland issues. And this is going to keep going long and long into the future, and hopefully one day, it's at the same level as AMD. But here's the thing. No amount of whining on the desktop is going to convince NVIDIA to do anything quicker. They could very well put a lot of their effort into dealing with the Wayland issue and getting it done as quickly as possible, but right now, they don't need to do so. Maybe if the Steam Deck had an NVIDIA card instead of an AMD card, that would give this massive incentive to actually get something done. But on the desktop, it doesn't really matter. But, there is a space where it does, and that is the business use for Linux. Now you may not know this, but until RHEL 7.6, GNOME wasn't the only first class desktop offering on RHEL. There was another one, that being KDE Plasma. Both of these were treated as default options available on RHEL. In 7.6, it was marked as deprecated, and by the time that 8 came out, it was completely removed as a default option from RHEL. At this point, GNOME is the only default that is available. Yes, there are ways to get KDE onto it, but most RHEL users are using GNOME. And RHEL 7 came out in June of 2014. This means it is almost at the end of the standard support cycle of RHEL, the 10 year support window that every version is given. After that, there is the extended lifecycle support, which is like additional stuff that has to be paid for, but this point here is where most people, if you're still on this, are expected to at least move on to the next version. So at that point, the only offerings on RHEL will be GNOME. Then there are things like CentOS Stream, which being the upstream of RHEL, uses GNOME. There are other systems like Ubuntu, which is GNOME first. There are things like Fedora, which is GNOME first. Now, you can go and use other things. There are these different spins in different flavors, but... The main one is going to be by far the biggest. Now, when we look at things like OpenSUSE, this one technically doesn't provide a default. 
there are a bunch of different options that are all available in the install and are all treated as first class options. But for everything else, if a desktop is needed for whatever workload is being done, GNOME is considered the default desktop of the Linux business world. And on the Linux desktop, you as an individual user, you don't really matter. You are one person with one GPU, one GPU. Maybe you have two of them, but you probably bought these GPUs a couple of years ago and you're not an active customer bringing, you know, a lot of revenue into the company. But what about these businesses that heavily rely on Nvidia cards and are using, you know, GNOME in a Linux environment? They are probably making big GPU purchase orders on a fairly regular basis, and they want their cards to be working. Right now, if they're having issues using the Wayland session, which they very well might be, they can just drop back to the X11 session and basically everything is good to go. But what if that X11 session is just suddenly no longer there? Well, there is going to be a lot of support tickets, whether that's to Red Hat, whether that's to NVIDIA, and when you're a big paying customer, not just to NVIDIA with your GPU contract, but also Red Hat likely paying for support from Red Hat, there is going to be a lot more emphasis on getting this problem actually solved as quickly as possible. What I am saying is I am not opposed to the idea of basically using GNOME as like, a stick to beat in video with, using GNOME as this thing that all of these people in the business space rely on, having it drop X11 support, and just basically forcing them to actually get their act together. Because whilst they are dealing with the problems slowly over time, they don't really have to get it dealt with quickly. As I said, if a sysadmin realizes, ah, oh, the Wayland side isn't exactly dealing with what we need it to deal with, you can always go to X11. When that's gone, the options are something has to go, whether that's NVIDIA or the desktop, and replacing the desktop when you're looking for a business class distro is gonna be really difficult. If you're going through Red Hat, like, there are no options. They are not going to provide support to some third-party package that offers KDE, which still has X11, or offers an older version of GNOME that they currently don't support. And if you're a company that also relies on that support from Red Hat, like, going somewhere else is going to be a massive burden. And in many cases, dropping NVIDIA can't really happen either. If you rely on CUDA, you rely on CUDA. Like, there is zero alternative in many cases to using CUDA. Yeah, things like Rockham exist, but hardware support on Rockham is an absolute joke. Like, no. And a lot of things only support doing compute using CUDA. And if you're maybe like an AI researcher, like CUDA is the thing you use in this space. Yeah, OpenCL exists, and in some cases, both OpenCL and CUDA is supported, but there is a lot more workloads where CUDA is just the only option. Now, I do understand that doing this would put a lot of businesses into a really, how would I say it, uh, unclear position where they just don't really know what to do. And that is not going to be pleasant. But I don't know the alternative because at some point, this is going to end up having to happen anyway. If you don't know, when Real 9 came out, they actually did mark X11 as deprecated. Xorg server is now deprecated. The Xorg display server is deprecated and will be removed in a future major role release. The default desktop session is now the Wayland session in most cases. The X11 protocol remains fully supported using X Wayland backend. As a result, applications that require X11 can run in the Wayland session. Mostly. Red Hat is working on resolving the remaining problems and gaps in the Wayland session. For the outstanding problems in Wayland, see the known issues. For now, you can switch your user session back to Xorg backend. For information, go to this link right here. And considering the pace at which KDE got removed, where in 7.6 it was marked as deprecated, by 8 it was gone, 
a lot of people are assuming that by row 10, Exorg is going to be completely gone as well. Which means that even if Gnome doesn't go and do this directly, it's gonna be happening very shortly into the future. And this isn't just an NVIDIA driver issue, basically the exact same problem exists when we're talking about certain proprietary tooling, like Slack for example, and to a lesser extent because most businesses don't really use it, Discord. There is no fundamental reason why these applications cannot properly support screen sharing on Wayland. All of the infrastructure is there to support it. They just don't choose to implement it. These problems and most of the others will be addressed over time slowly. But I would prefer to see them getting addressed a lot sooner rather than later. And basically being thrown into the deep end kind of is the incentive to get things dealt with as quickly as possible. Maybe tearing off the band-aid isn't the best approach. But it's certainly not the worst approach either. And it's certainly gonna cause some people to actually realize that this problem needs to be dealt with as quickly as possible. But in the end, I'm not a GNOME or an NVIDIA user. So for me, whatever is done isn't going to directly affect me. So I'm just curious to watch from the outside and just see what happens. But maybe you guys are, and maybe you have a different opinion on this entire situation and feel like, you know, maybe everything should just wait, you know, 10, 50, however long it ends up taking for things to actually all be fully dealt with. And then at the end, deal with whatever little problems happen with that transition once everything is done. That's a totally fair opinion as well, and I would love to hear about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Daily Bearer Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and my next desktop is probably going to be Plasma.